Hello, welcome to the video. In this video, we're looking at section 1.1 in the Algebra 2 textbook, where we are going to uh, look at apparent functions and transformations. So anytime that we are looking at apparent functions, what that means is we are looking at the basic uh, the basic function for that uh, particular equation all right whether it's like linear quadratic uh, absolute value stuff like that so and transformations is being able to either change the direction or uh, change the um, shape of the function uh, with respect to different values. So what we have here are four uh, different types of apparent functions. So here they says uh, a constant function. Anytime they're dealing with a constant function, you're looking at a horizontal line. The reason why it's at a horizontal line is because my slope is at zero all right so if i use you know both uh both a constant any linear equation both would use y equals mx plus b uh, the only difference between the constant and linear you're actually going to get a value other than zero for m and because with it just being zero for m you're just getting basically y equals b so Whatever that value is for B is where your horizontal line is going to be located. Uh, for linear, this one is going to be, in this case, uh, Y is equal to X, or another way, F of X is equal to X. So my Y intercept is at zero, my slope is one. So that is why our line, our linear line is going, uh, is increasing from left to right. Looking at the third function in this uh, table or chart is absolute value. Now, if you recall, any time that you place an abs a value in the absolute value term, the result is always going to be positive. So if you look here, if I put x, I put y, whether, so if I put like negative 1, zero or one if i put negative one in here for x the absolute value of negative one is one the absolute value of zero would still be zero the absolute value of one is one so that is why you get this v shaped in our uh, function okay very similar with absolute value it looks like quadratic the only difference is absolute value gives you a v shaped quadratic gives you a u-shaped all right but with the same idea it doesn't matter if x is negative or positive the result is going to be positive because when you square something squaring it gets you a result of a positive number for y so that is why you have your function lines going from left to right they're both going upward in this particular example and so those are the four parent functions that we're going to be taking a look at in this example here they're asking us to identify the function family to which f belongs then they want us to compare the graph of the function uh, to the graph of its apparent function. So I look at this, and you guys can reference uh, the chart uh, on the previous page. I noticed that it's a V-shaped, so this uh, particular example is going to be dealing with absolute value. So it's an absolute value function. All right, now they're asking you to compare it. So if you were to draw the apparent function f of x equals the absolute value of x, it would look something like this. It would start out at 0, 0, and your points 
would go here. Okay, so <clears throat> a couple things that you need to uh, look at. One is these two points here are the vertexes of those two absolute value functions. All right, that is where they kind of like, it's the same name as the quadratic function, the vertex. So that is where our graph changes going from like increasing to decreasing and vice versa, depending on uh, what kind of graph it is or what type of absolute value graph you're getting. So <clears throat> with respect to the apparent function that we just drew, the vertex in comparison, the vertex of the graph that was given to us is one unit up. So And then the next thing is there's a two on the outside. There's nothing on the outside here, which means that the value of that is one. So because it's a two um, and two is greater than one, we are actually uh, noticing that this has a vertical stretch. And there'll be sometimes they'll ask you about the factor. In this case, this is a factor of two. That is not as important, but being able to identify, address that it is a vertical stretch and being able to identify that it does have a vertical stretch. And that is being able to compare uh, that graph to the apparent function. Looking at uh, this one, uh, same idea, looking at which family is it. Since it's uh, a curve, it looks like a U shape. This uh, particular um, function is quadratic. So that's quadratic. All right. Now, if you were to look at this at the apparent function, f of x is equal to x squared, it's going to look something kind of like this. Okay. So from here, the vertexes, this one is also called a vertex here and here, it looks like it moved three units to the right. And that makes sense because my H is three. So it moved three units to the right. And if you notice here on the outside, you have a one fourth. There's nothing on the outside with that X squared. So that's one. One fourth falls between zero and one. So this is an example of a vertical shrink. And we talked about this um, in previous sections. Uh, here, it's asking you to graph uh, g of x equals x minus 4. And it's a parent function they want us to describe the transformation. So if we were to look, so if I just drew an xy coordinate here, all right, again, this is in slope-intercept form. so this particular graph I'm going to make in red and this is so say this is where negative 4 is and it looks like it goes up one to the right one and my graph is going to go somewhere right about here now my apparent function I'm going to make in blue it's going to look something kind of like this now looking at the two graphs the blue one and the red one blue one being the apparent one they're both parallel because they have the same slope. But with respect to the transformation, we can say that this graph g of x has moved four units down. Here, they're wanting us to graph negative x squared. All right, so when we graph negative x squared here, if you remember, any time a was a negative number, that was when you had an upside down U shape. And since there's nothing else, my vertex is at zero, zero, and it comes like so, like this. My apparent function is gonna look something just really similar, but it's, my a is positive, so it's moving upward. 
So looking at the difference in its transformation, we can say that uh, it reflects over the y-axis. Because this is the y-axis. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the x-axis. My bad. It reflects over the x-axis. This is the y-axis. My apologies. It reflects over the x-axis. All right, and then here they want us to graph it again. You know, looking at A, this one here is my vertex is going to be at zero, zero. Because of the two, it's actually going to go up one, two to the right one, and then up two to the left one. So my graph will look something kind of like this. My parent function, I'm going to make in red. It's going to go up one to the right one and up one to the left one. And so it's going to look something kind of like this. So if you noticed that the black graph that we created, which was 2 times it by the absolute value of x, is kind of narrower than uh, our red graph. Anytime that, that a graph like that, when it's absolute value, or quadratic and it's narrower, that is when you have a vertical stretch. Okay, now if you look at B in this particular instance, and they were looking at one half, so one half x uh, squared will look something kind of like this, and then the apparent function, which I'm going to make in green, is going to look something kind of like this. And if you notice that this particular one is now wider than the apparent function, when it's wider, it is going to have a vertical shrink. And we knew that because of the values that are given. One half falls between zero and one. The reason why it's a stretch, two is greater than one. All right, and we've talked about that. All right, so here it says use a graphing calculator. Now, not everybody has a graphing calculator, but this is something that we can um, graph without one. So in order to graph this without one, we have to be able to decipher what is uh, the general absolute value function. In this case, um, I'm just going to write in y instead of g of x or f of x. And it's going to be y equals a times it by the absolute value of x minus h plus k. So the vertex is always going to be located at h comma k. A is going to determine what your slope is of your absolute value graph. And then you have to take into account the mirrored image slope. I'm gonna, I'll show you what that looks like. So if I have my x, y coordinate plane, and in this particular instance, my h will be negative 5, my k will be negative 3. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So my vertex is located right there. My slope is at negative 1. So that means I'm going to go down one to the right one. So that's my slope there. Next, you have to take into account the mirrored image slope. So what you're going to do when it comes to a mirrored image slope, you are going to keep the same number on the top, which is negative one, and then just uh, add a negative one on the bottom so it'd be like down one to the left one so here is my absolute value graph i know it's absolute value i know it's going to be a v-shape and because of that negative on the outside it made the the v-shape upside down so if i'm asked to describe this transformation with the apparent function now if you look at the apparent functions it'll look something kind of like this Well, my vertex 
moved to the left five units. So vertex moved left five units. And down three units. The next thing is because A was negative, that means that it reflected over the X axis. So that would be our description. All right, so here it says the table shows the height y of a dirt bike x seconds after jumping off a ramp. What type of function can you use to model the data? And then it's asking you to estimate the height after 1.75 seconds. So again, if we look at this, uh, graph here. So we got, I'm just going to try to do the best that I can draw this out. So this is, so it's zero eight. So let's just say, let's say this is 10 and I think I saw 20. So we'll put 20 right here and then we'll, we'll do this is 10. This is negative 10. Uh, Go, this is 20. So 0, 0,8. Let's make it a different color. We'll say that's right about there. 1 half, comma 20. So it looks like it's right about there. 2, comma, so 1, comma 24. Looks like it'll be like right about there. And then it's got 1.520, which is right there. And then 2 comma 8, which is right there. So it looks like this kind of a graph. So I'm led to believe that this graph is quadratic, all right? Because of, because of this, it appears that... it is you know much less so it's, it looks like it's going to be the vertex is located we'll we'll say that it's at you know 1 comma 24 for this uh for this one so we could say that all right so since it's 1 comma 24 so we could say it's going to be y equals uh negative We'll just say negative one times it by uh, in the parentheses would be x minus one because that's our value of h quantity squared plus k which is twenty four. So estimating how much the height would be is we're just going to replace this for x. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is going to be y equals negative 1 times it by 1.75 minus 1 squared plus 24. So I go over here in my calculator, 1.75 minus 1 is just 0.75. I square that, that's 0.625 times that by negative 1, that's now negative, plus 24, so that is about 23.4, so that's what, feet. Okay? And that is uh, being able to use uh, apparent functions and transformations. So I hope this helps. Until next time.